got on the Republican ticket is still better than the best candidate the Democrats have. So I come back in, I get a call on my cell phone. <coughs> We just heard that somebody uh, shouted out at the president at the joint session of Congress, and we, and we heard it was your dad. Do you have a comment? I said, well, I don't have a comment because that's, that's not dad. He, he wouldn't do that. I said, let me find out what's going on. So I, I hung up, I called dad. I said, dad, I heard a crazy, crazy thing. I said, I heard that um, you, you shouted out uh, something at the president. He said, son, I did. And I shouldn't have done it at that place. And he proceeded to tell me what happened. His anger and frustration was born out of what he witnessed as Congress. Back in July, he was sitting on a small subcommittee that was introducing amendments uh, to require proof of citizenship for anybody um, seeking to get um, government-run health care. So the Republicans in the subcommittee put up two bills saying, in order to get health care, you've got to show proof of citizenship. It was voted down by the Democrats in, in that subcommittee. That night, the president got up and started, in his speech, was calling the people, <coughs> calling people who, who didn't agree with him and that were trying to stop this process, was, was saying things like liar, misinformed, misleading. And dad was sitting there just taking it, and then all of a sudden what happened next is uh, the president said, I made the promise that government uh, tax funds would not go to illegal aliens. Well, immediately it, it, it sparked a gut reaction in him. Okay? And uh, like I said, if he could do it over, he wouldn't have done it in that venue. But it's like this the health care bill says illegal aliens aren't eligible for health care. That's like saying it's against the law of speed, but we're not going to put any cops on the streets. How do you enforce that? It's like saying everybody in this room is required to have insurance to drive a car, but if you get a new tag, or if you uh, if you have to uh, buy a new car, you get a new tag, you have to get a driver's license, you have to show proof of insurance. If you're not required to show proof of insurance, then how can you enforce the driving with insurance law, right? That's, that, that, that is basically what was happening here. You can't enforce the law, so he spoke out. Since then, he's apologized to the president because the debate shouldn't be about his actions on Congress. He apologized, the president graciously accepted. And, I, and I'm glad the president did, and I'm glad that he apologized. But guys, it is important, regardless of where you're from, regardless of your belief system, that people stay focused <coughs> on, the, on the facts of this. That people don't get swirled up in the emotion of it. When you, when you watch what's going on in this healthcare debate, keep your eye on the ball, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your parents, tell people who are interested, and I'm telling you, you guys are the future, so it's important that you get involved. Ask, why were those amendments voted down? And why, why, why weren't people speaking up? I, I'm happy to hear that the White House is now entertaining the same provisions that were voted down this summer into this, this bill. So apparently some good has come out of this. Uh, we'll see where it goes. Well, I would a little bit stick up for some of my colleagues in the fact that while Senator Knotts may not always vote like I would vote, there are times when he held our leadership to a higher standard. Our leadership, Republican leadership, nobody you mentioned proposed those tax increases. They weren't Democrats. J.P. Knotts went up and said, guess what? We're going to do something about it. And guess what he did? He took the majority ship. That's what he did. They changed it and put Senator Peeler in charge. So he's been fighting for the taxpayer for a long time. And again, I don't always agree with Jake. Okay. But all the same is fighting for the Am I a speaker or are you? I don't mind answering the question. We've got to let me answer the first question before we get three more. And so I don't mean to be your rude, but I'm trying to answer the question. And so Senator Knotts has time and time again stood up for people that have no voice. And there have been a ton of bills that when somebody else wouldn't fight for them, he would. And you know what's great in politics? is that there's a few people out there that don't worry about what everybody else says. If they philosophically believe in a fight, they'll take the fight. And most folks, most folks, do whatever appeases the media or appeases everybody else in the chamber to get along. And so I like the diversity of people that have some backbone to fight for what they believe in. I actually get along with Gil Cobb Most of the time don't agree with her, but I know she's fighting for the right call. And so there are a lot of people up there that are melancholy or a melvatose, they, they don't want to disrupt anything, but they don't really fight for anything. 
and it's the easiest way to get reelected is to just get along with everybody, vote however your party says, don't stick out if you disagree with them, do whatever they say. And so I admire people that have a little bit of backbone to say what they think because in politics, is trying to please the masses now. And that's what we do in Washington. And so, again, he's not as conservative as maybe I would be. But again, he, he represents probably his district pretty well. 